<laughs> it's oh, like dude, every he's not, day. He's it's so much thing. worse than the subway guy. Oh, infinitely worse than the so subway guy. Worse. The subway guy is a minge compared to this guy. You'd you'd invite the subway guy to your your kid's bar mitzvah. Have him, is have he him. worse or is he just more successful? Yeah, I, I, the way I see it, worse. P. Diddy is who the it's subway guy aspired to be. I you could say that about any number of people, but I'm going to judge know. a man on his actions, too, uh, Woody. Not on mm-hmm. the just the the not the on his aspirations. Yeah. yeah, this isn't Minority Report. I can't Tom Cruise drop in like a spider and arrest you for some crime you might have committed. I just think yeah. uh, if you Good give movie, money and way. power to what was his name, Jared? Yeah, Jared Fogel. Then, yeah, Jared Fogel. Then maybe he uh, could Good got more kids here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jared doesn't Jared, know. We, we, we had, had Jared Fogel's childhood friend on the podcast. We didn't even know it. He's a pretty successful car vlogger, YouTuber yeah. guy. He actually we got him on for the cars. And he's right? like, yeah, I'm, I'm good friends with Jared Fogel. Like, not just childhood. Like, he was Jared Fogel's, like, buddy throughout the good years. You know, when he was slinging them $5 footlongs and he was oh. ap- making appearances everywhere. Like, he was tra- he's like Derek. He's, he's, his bud- he's his boy. And he started defending... He started defending this subway pedophile on here, and we didn't know what, what to say. I, I wanted to be like, "Yeah, but he's a pedophile, right?" He went to federal prison for it, but like, I, I didn't want to make him mad. He was he like was, denigrating, denigrating. I use the word right. Yeah, the the yeah. women, right? He's the like, girls. Yeah, they were paid. Yeah, girls. Why did I say women? They're, they're yeah. children. Yeah, the children. <laughs> if I recall, he like called this- them ladies of the night. Yeah. He referred. <laughs> The, the, first of all, like you might <laughs> like fourteen. <laughs> when I tell you, yeah, and I want you to have a good mental image of what these girls look like because I feel like it's relevant when you got someone who was like there, calling them ladies of the night. They look like little fourteen-year-old girls who probably didn't have a boyfriend, and and Jared Fogel's like go- going after them and and fucking whatever he did to them. I don't remember the the details, but this guy was calling them ladies of the night. It was, mm. it was, and Jared had made a financial agreement with all of his victims, quote unquote. Even though these ladies of the night were already paid, then they got paid again. So none of them came to testify against Mister Fogel, and but the judge knew that that's the game that he played. So um, he took a plea agreement for like twelve and a half years or fifteen and a half years, but. By that time, remember, if you're doing three for one, you're going to do about five and be out. But she sentenced him to like 17, 21 years to make sure he did all 15 and a half of his years. Mm -hmm. So he is um, already kind of up and over the the hump, if I remember right. But uh, I haven't been out there in in a while to see him. So I'm going to uh, these girls. You called them ladies of the night. Were they prostitutes? They were, they were paid. Prostitutes? They were paid. Yeah, they were all paid. Yeah. It looks like what Zach linked is that he got in trouble for, what is it? Sex tourism. So he was going places for the purpose of having sex yeah, with people but who were that's underage. A, that's another thing of how do you prove it. But I, and, and I was I was almost let down because, of course, you know, some of the, the – there's a really terrible documentary right now with some chick that really wants a lot of money that was on like it, uh, investigation discovery recently. And, you know, you can't defend your friend that's a, a, has a freaking problem. Mm-hmm. But Jared was always one of those people. And it was it, and no matter how creepy it is, like the age of consent in like um, in New York is, let's say, 15. And that is pretty damn disgusting. But the age of consent in Indiana was like 16. But he would set up his little rendezvous using his phone from Indiana, and then he would say, "Hey, I'll I'll pick you up at the airport because I have to open a subway or something in New York." But by doing that, that's a federal crime, and that's why he's in federal prison right now. And the chick that kind of set him up was kind of creepy. His co-defendant is a super creep, and uh, he just kind of got mixed up in the wrong crap. So anyhow, uh, I was like, man. I need to be a better friend, even though I don't agree with the things that, you know, some people may be very opinionated that, oh, I heard Jared did this, I heard Jared that, but I was there firsthand and I saw, and I had no idea this shit was going on. You told the story like he was with 15 year olds and it would have been legal if he wasn't. So yeah. And yeah, well, and then, so, but by, by making his rendezvous via, you know, state lines, that's federal. And so even though pornography. Yeah. 
and that was the Russell, the his co-defendant. So uh, it was. We should have him back on again. No, that, I would that was, love that was to. Great. If, if I recall, it happened. It was one of those times where, unfortunately, it didn't occur in the episode sooner, and so it was like three hours and thirty-eight minutes in. He's like, that, "Yeah, that car question reminds me of my good friend Jared Fogel, you know, like, <laughs> the the subway rapist." And he's like, "Well, wow. uh, he gets a bit of a bad rap, you know. There were a couple of, <laughs> couple of predatory prostitutes, and they don't tell yeah. you that in the news." And then, meanwhile, like Woody. Or, or <laughs> Don't tell you that, but it's like it's like looking it up, and Woody's like, hmm, it says here one was 13 and one was 12. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, I don't get into the details of it, but it's like <laughs> it's like right, because he was pretending he didn't know they were minors. Like that was like <laughs> yeah. part of the excuses. And yeah, really the women were the predators. Women, I mean, yeah. Yeah. the children were the predators. When he said like friends, child predators, like, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You like when he said friends initially, I, I thought it was like, oh, they were like acquaintances in like the five dollar foot long days and he's like no right in the middle of the accusations you know he'd come over we'd play ncaa you know <laughs> yeah order a yeah, when there were like reporters waiting outside his door on the sidewalk you know that kind of scene he'd walk past the reporters and go play video games and shit yeah <laughs> like, no, he, seems like he was always really nice to him he would say honestly my, that's my a hell of a friend onion chicken teriyaki <laughs> it is i just i sent a letter to a federal prison today Mm. to to a famous prisoner that I am friends with and Epstein's dead though if yeah. you can if you could and he's and maybe Zach could start going Google crazy <laughs> he is in he is in Inglewood correctional facility in Denver area Colorado and I grew up with this person and never knew he had a problem and he is serving time. And yeah. he he did not have a bunky roommate named Kyle. So <laughs> boom, and Jared Fogel is absolutely correct. My friend I was close from, with Epstein. Oh, you know Jared my, Fogel. Oh, That's so my, funny. Tell us about Jared. Yeah. Uh so Jared is was a was, was a great friend of mine. And I and people go, oh my God, he was a this, that, and other, whatever else. Um I, Jared and I did we we went to more NASCAR races, more. Co- I've been to a Super Bowl because I knew him, and you know, you people say, "Well, you know, you know, you never know what your friends are into or whatever else." So Jared gave up a uh, addiction and picked up a addiction. So mm. I, I mean, and I, I would always be like, "Who wants to have sex with your fat ass?" Like I was always like, we were just pals, we were just friends. But since I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't have any earrings, cavities, tattoos, body piercings, I was always pretty boring, but I was a club disc jockey, and Jared liked to party. And he would come in and hang out, and he knew, since I didn't drink and and anything, that I would just drop him off. He literally lived six miles from my house, right? Like, And we were friends for years. Years. Oh, he had a gorgeous home. He had a... So, but... Is this mid subway years? Like he's already. Oh yeah. This is subway okay. years. And I, I, but it, we would, he would call me, I would drop him off at home and I would just go to bed and it would be like seven ten in the morning on a Sunday. And it like, are you like, Travis, come pick me up. And I'm like, bro, it's seven ten, And they're like, what are we doing? He goes, I have to say, gentlemen, start your engines at the subway 400 at the Ontario <laughs> auto club speedway in California. And it's first class all the way. What time are you going to be here? I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, I'll be there in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so it was always weird because when Jared and I would travel, um, I, he could, like, if he needed coffee, he could never walk up to this, the, the, like, if there was a Hardee's at the airport, I would go get the coffee because someone would take a picture of him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, God, Jared's at, 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 uh, oh. at Hardee's. And so, but there is, um, there's a big badass picture of, of Jared wearing a blue Dallas Clark, Clark Jersey. And we are in the Indianapolis international airport and it's a terrible picture of him. And he's kind of turned sideways in like the Bigfoot pose. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and, and if it, whenever you do like the, the wide shot of it, my dumb ass is standing right next to him in that picture. So we, nice. we fly, we fly all the way out <laughs> somewhere and, when we land like his phone just explodes like and there's all this stuff that says you know jared's off the bandwagon he's a fat fuck you know whatever else and uh that's i am standing right next to him in that photo right there 
and he just he not just a good looks angle. Like a, not a good angle. No, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's <laughs> yeah. He just looks like a fat fuck. So, um, uh, that's that baggage terminal. Can I say yes. oh, the fact that the 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 part of his body that protrudes the most seems to be yeah. the middle of his chest. You know, yeah. I mean so, that's a good look. So, needless to say, we that is us leaving Indianapolis International. So I don't know where the hell I'm at. I'm definitely not that guy right there. But uh, we were uh, going to California, and his phone explodes because, of course, he has no cell phone service when we're in the air. Mm -hmm. And there's this big non thing about how he's a fat fuck and whatever else. So we go do our thing and then um, end up at a hotel. You know, he goes in his room and does whatever the hell he was doing. Travis, married and happy, went to bed. And uh, the next or that evening was the evening that Tiger Woods and his wife got into a fight with the with the golf clubs and the car went to the ditch. And we were like... Thank you, Tiger Woods. We're like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tiger But so, yeah, I mean, it was, and and knowing, and so we kind of, you know, didn't hang out very much anymore when he, his co-defendant, which is Russ Taylor, um, and him became friends, and he became like the chairman of his Jared Foundation and all that stuff. Mm. And uh, I could kind of see the wheels were falling off, but, you know, if, if some, if, everybody has a friend that has a problem and no, everybody that's listening to this or watching this is like, yeah, somebody either drinks too much or smokes too much or what they watch at home or what they mm -hmm. do. You can never control what your friends do. And uh, so I was like, okay, the morning that Jared's house got raided, like, you know, because this is Indianapolis and Jared is a, he lives right up the street and mm -hmm. he's a local, local celebrity worth, you know, 15 million at the time. And so, you know, your phone's going, burr, 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 you know, helicopters over some way Jared's house. And I'm like, got one eye open and I'm like going, oh, wow. Right. So I go to the bathroom, comb my teeth, walk back in, turn the TV on. It's probably 10 after 7 a.m. And I'm like going and my wife rolls over and she's like going, wow. And I looked at her and I go, no matter what, no matter what, I said, they will not be here at this house. And she's like, no matter what, they will not be at this house or whatever else. You're you're friends with Jared and blah blah blah. Oh, He's just creep. So. Damn, you're getting it home already. First thing, <laughs> dude. So it's like, so two two days later, and I'm like, oh shit, right? So my daughter, 18 at the time, now 28, okay. uh, she answers the phone. She goes or answers the door. She goes, Dad, two guys in a Dodge Charger in the in the driveway. I'm like, oh. So I'm, I'm like, all right, put them in the front room, and I, you know, put clothes on, walk out. My wife's going, they aren't gonna be here, right? They're gonna be here. Right? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like going, Haley. I'm like, babe, look. So I walk out there, and they literally questioned me for like 15 minutes, and then the last thing they said was because anybody who was in his phone got a knock like that week, mm -hmm. like any mm -hmm. any text, anything, and of course Jared and I would communicate, and we'd whatever. So. The, the last thing they said to me was like, hey, do you think Jared would ever cheat on his wife? And I go, no. I said, I just DJed their wedding like three years ago. He's got two kids. Like he's always dying. To, and he, at that point, they knew I didn't know a thing. Uh, and honestly, I think if you're a, a child predator, you probably have to be fairly charismatic to make that happen. Dude, he was, the, he was the least charismatic TV statesman of all time. Go back and I, watch uh, a Jared yeah. Vogel commercial. They no like don't even give him lines in half of it. They're like, hold these pants, you ugly idiot. And I then saw the, <laughs> I saw this thing on TV. It burned into my mind is true. It might not be that child predators sometimes do better in prison than you might think because by their very nature, they're pretty like manipulative and persuasive and charismatic and that helps them. I don't know if it's true. I feel like they find out about it and then they, they there's a reason they have to move them into that it depends silo or whatever yeah it depends where they go but there's a lot of places where they they get them they, they genuinely like target them immediately and like it's kill on site type shit uh mm. that, that's genuinely a thing yeah. that happens do you think but those are like nice peaceful days in prison where like the latin kings and the nazis and the the no no you can kill like, him yeah, they like all come together. It's and then your like, turn. Every once in a while. And they're like, you know, this make me think we're not so different, you and I. 
<laughs> he stabs him. <laughs> Just he stabs him back. You're right. <laughs> Kidding, you cracker. Fuck out of my neighborhood. Have you guys it ever been like, in a fight? Uh, okay. Oh, PK clips added this what you guys were just talking about. So I got it on my watch later. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> After a fight, I swear I bonded with the other guy. Like even if we hated each other as much as we could afterwards, it was like, well, you know, I don't know. I see some positives in him. I wonder if that happens in the like prison scene. You know, you give me a little shanking, and afterwards, huh. eh, that was a bonding experience. No, I don't think so, man. I wouldn't like that. <laughs> I don't think no? we're good friends. I was <laughs> listening to one of those prisoner podcasts. I won't do it and then. <laughs> this guy was this guy was doing like ten years for something, and he was like, when I went in, I decided I'm gonna get in the gang. I'm gonna fuck somebody up i'm gonna sell some dope i'm gonna enjoy my prison experience and i'm like holy shit that's that's, that that was your idea going in Mm -hmm. and uh, he's in for a while and he's already like a higher up in this gang like a white gang and they they send him a note that's like hey this guy who coming in today this george guy he ratted on one of our guys back at the other prison we want him stomped out and he's like no fucking problem and immediately like jumps this guy and that he's never spoken to or seen in his life beats the shit out of him. The guy fights back a little. And in that prison, if you fight back at all, you both go to the hole. So they mm-hmm. both go to the hole together. Six weeks sitting there asking another man to flush your toilet for you and, and like just eating, b- being starved. Basically it's, it's horrific. Uh, they get out. They let him out in the same room together. He's like, so I was like, like I said, on site. So I started <laughs> whooping his ass again. <laughs> like, like they're, they're, they're letting them out of the hole and sending them back, but they put them in the same room to do, do that. Do you think that so was just, a, Bad decision or an intentional, terrible, or an intentional action. Again. So he whoops his ass again, and they give it. And this time, the guy like took the whooping because he wants out of the hole. And uh, and he's like, so they gave me you know x amount of months more in the hole. And he's like, you know what the fucked up thing is? He's like, nah, what? <sighs> Once I got out, they said, you know what? Turns out that George guy, he was good. It was the other guy who was the rat who told on George. <laughs> That's why they <laughs> sent George here because the guy ratted him out. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i've been in the hole for three four months at this point <laughs> <laughs> do they do like nice things to make it up or he's like we're gonna we're gonna grind up a bunch of pop tarts from commissary and make him a cake that says i'm so sorry for for destroying your ability to hear out of your left ear <laughs> i'm so sorry for this <laughs> you think like that there were like fun times in the hole where they're like man i don't care what you say they fucking ruined the end where I, where the the, the the night king just didn't even have a fucking reason to be there. Man. <laughs> <laughs> they were like nine, dude, shut the fuck up. There were like nine seasons of prophecies that didn't matter. <laughs> I'm beating your ass for this afterward. <laughs> Derek, are you even getting the Game of Thrones references he's making? I think no. It's been a while since I watched it. <laughs> the night, I remember the, the Night King and I remember the shitty ending. That's about it. it. Yeah, I want to purge it this from my a new-